that earnings season is indeed in full swing, what do we make of a long-term outperformer that's had trouble hitting some of the revenue estimates lately, even as it continues to knock the earnings numbers out of the park? And that's the story with Snap One Incorporated, SNA, the maker of high-quality tools and diagnostic equipment for auto repair shops, as well as serving clients in aerospace, agriculture, construction, mining, and power generation. When Snap On last reported at the beginning of February, the company delivered a solid bottom line beat. Some analysts were a little bit critical of its top line performance. Back then, that kind of result caused the stock to get hammered. But then the whole market bottomed a week later, and Snap On stock took off. It's to the point where it's now up more than 27 points from its February lows. Then this morning, Snap On reports again, and sure enough, the revenues aren't as robust as some would like, with sales up 0.8%, but earnings increasing 15% year over year. The stock dropped $1.13, or 0.70% in response. But after these results, I have to wonder, if Snapbone can produce this kind of earnings growth when the global economy is still weak and some of its end markets are suffering, just imagine how well they'll do when things start to improve. Let's check in with Nick Pinchuk. He's the chairman and CEO of Snapbone Incorporated. Hear more about the quarter and figure out what's happening here. Mr. Pinchuk, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks. Glad to be here. All right, Nick, the uh, automobile, the business we know for Snapbone, on fire. We Doing did it. Well. Right? Doing Oil well. and gas and military a little soft. Something yes. we need to worry about longer term? Yeah, no, I don't think so. But I mean, oil and gas, you've seen the cataclysmic decrease in oil yeah. prices. Who would have expected that? Eventually, that'll. That'll even out. And military, again, you got budget sequestration, talked about today right. even. But that's going to bypass. And, in fact, those businesses over time have been quite cyclical for us. And one thing we're doing, we keep investing in those businesses. Okay. Last year, we produced, we launched 703 new military products and 335 products for oil and gas because we know that we're going to expand in those segments, rolling the Snap-on brand out of the garage because customers there really want our product. That we've, we haven't paid attention to it in the past. We're rolling out, and that's going to work for us. Well, we're that, confident. That's a, I'm glad you brought that up because there was a time when you came on and you said you were investing in Europe. And I was quite concerned. I said, Europe is in a downturn. How can you do that? Europe was probably the highlight of this quarter. Yeah, well, our hand, our hand tool business in Europe did pretty well. I mean, Europe uh, grew at uh, mid-single digits this quarter, mm -hmm. and its earnings were up more than that. And this is the 11th straight quarter our European business has gone up, and the, or, sorry, 10th straight quarter, and the 12th straight quarter that earnings has grown. So this has become a great contributor for us, because what we did is we knew our customers weren't going away, and we right. kept investing right. in product and capabilities in Europe. So when the market came back, it's done well for it. It's still mixed. Germany's still down. Germany's right. giving me a headache these days. You know, another used to be France, now it's okay. Germany. But but still that business has been strong. Now, one of the things I like about snap is I regard you as a technological innovator. You come up with new products all the time that add right to the top right. and bottom lines. What have you uh, come up with since we've uh, seen each other last? Well, we can talk about these things. You know, one of the things that's happening in, in auto repair is that the cars are getting more computerized. Everybody right. knows this. There's more electronics on the cars. And today, when you repair a used car, there are 300 million cars on a road and 11 and a half years old, 50%, 40 to 50% of the repairs require a diagnostic unit, a laptop for car. 80% of the new, 80% of the repairs on new cars require diagnostic units. So technicians are going to need more of these sort of laptops for right. cars. Right. And we have two of them here. Okay. One for the, one for the, for the uh, the inexperienced, not inexperienced, but the starting up technician. Okay, so a start guy, to mean a guy who is guy not... is going to work on oil changes and going to work on okay, brake so jobs. Okay, so this stuff that like, the, okay, that the is deal about this, you plug it in. School. It covers nine. What, one of the cool things Snap On has is it covers ninety eight percent of the cars out there. This is hundreds of thousands of possible possible right. uh, computer systems, and it'll tell this technician what the car is saying, okay. what's wrong, and generally a brake job or an oil change. He doesn't have to refer to anything to figure out how to do it, okay. right? So you have this. For the, for the entry guy. Then you have the go-to for the, for the experienced technician. This is called Solus. This is okay. more experience. And what happens here is you got to check engine light. You go into the car, you go in, you don't know what's wrong with the car. This thing will tell you what the car is saying, allow you to see its heartbeat. And then when you get that data, you can go out and access Snap-on's unique database. Hundreds of millions of records associated with car repair. It'll say 92% of the time when the car said this, this is what you change. You fix the car on that basis for the experienced tech. And Big well, data working for us. Okay, and, and I think that that big data database is the, the competitors don't have. I was looking exactly. at the Frost and it's Sullivan you, numbers, you know, rate the industry. I mean, you have hand tools, 70% uh, next brand, 11%. Diagnostic, 63 next brand, 7%. Exactly, exactly. Because when you look at this, nobody else has this kind of, we call it sure track. Nobody else has this big data. 
you know, we people think of us as a hand tool company. Right. We make things like you can see them here, like sockets and wrenches and so on. And we know how to make those more effectively, more powerfully, smaller than anybody right. else. So we kind of think we have big data and small steel better than anybody but, else. But, but let me give you, let me, uh, uh, there's a, something, a supposition that yes. I'm concerned about. Some of these cars are coming out, and they are so difficult that I would think that only the manufacturer can can solve that. That means the smaller stores, many of whom rely on you, may. Or is it possible that the cars are too difficult for them? Well, even with your actually, right. what's happening is the cars are too difficult for the amateur. The amateur. amateur. And what's happening is actually over a period of time, the independent shops have grown in share in terms of repair dollars. Because I mean, the, the ones that would use yes, would use this kind of not stuff. Just use because wrenches because when you're in a Ford dealership, when you're yeah. a Ford or Chevy dealership, and you plug in a laptop for a car, you only have to worry about Fords pretty much. They're right. they're repairing Fords. When you're in when you're in John's Auto Body or John's Auto Repair, you got to plug this in. You got to think of 47 different possible cars. 47 different possible cars. And this is what's driving our quarter. You said before about the idea that our earning, our sales are lower than they have been. Yeah, they were 2.5% organically. Not chopped liver, though. Right, not at but all. But the earnings were 15.5% growth. And that's over 15.5% growth last year. One of the things that Snap-on's been able to do is make strong profits out of relatively tepid volumes. Right. And it's because we introduced new products. Well, I think your company, we've liked it for more than a double, and I'm continuing to like it now. That's Nick Pinchuk. He's the chairman and CEO of Snap-on. Guys, when there's a company that doesn't have a lot of competition, those are companies that can make a lot of money on what they sell. May have money's back after the break. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.